What's up you guys? Uh, today we're going to show you how we are going to build our in-ear monitoring system featuring the X32 rack. We are going to change everything from this guy to this guy and we just took out everything that was here. We thought we'll show you how we built this rack by ourselves. So we've already built this patch rack in our um, previous build. We showed it in a little video like a year ago. This is basically just everything hardwired to each other. So this is an output and an input hardwired to each other. So it splits here. One of these goes into the rack and the other one goes back out to either the monitoring desk on stage or whoever else wants to get that signal. And this is something we can recommend anyone building these things to label everything. So this is the rack. And our input splits go into these inputs on the back here. And the other one, once again, uh, goes to the monitor desk. Then we're also going to route these two ports if we ever want to hook up an S16. Over here we have all the outputs, which we are going to route to our ears. So the first problem that we encountered was these little screws that go into this 19 inch rack here. They don't fit our screws. So. We had to get these guys out of the old rack, which is being moved right now, and place them over here. So we need to fill you guys in on some technical stuff. So over here we have a Wi-Fi router, because the X32 rack on its own does not send Wi-Fi. We use this to get a signal so that we can use the app on our iPad, computer and whatever. And there's also this little box, which we use to um, insert a Wi-Fi extender so that the range is larger. Also on this 19 inch bit over here is our power and we can also give power. This is the way we um, insert our Wi-Fi extender and this USB port here we use that um, to send audio because we use the XO2 rack as a USB interface as well to send backing tracks to our ears and to the front of house. And these two ports are to connect an S16 module, which once again, we don't need because we only use 16 channels. So we start out with a drawer in the bottom, which is gonna support the X32 and hold all the goodies. We use the Behringer P1s. Um, so we don't use a wireless system. We are wired actually. And, and here are some amazing stickers, the power con, some batteries. What's supposed to be in here is our Wi-Fi extender, which is not in here, which, which is, is this guy. So this sends out the Wi-Fi signal. It amplifies it so that we can uh, up to how many meters? I like think 50? Up to 50. Like 50 meters of signal. So we have arrived at the point where we can start wiring everything back into the system, only we have to wait for the delivery guy for one last part. Waiting for the delivery guy. Is that him? Is that him? Is he there yet? So while we and Skipper the dog are waiting for the delivery guy, we are going to update the X32. If you go to setup, you can see which firmware you have. And we have 3.11, which is vintage by now, I guess. The only things you need for the update is a USB stick that's formatted and a laptop on which you can download the firmware. You can find the firmware update on the Bering website. Here you have X32 rack and you go to the side over here where there is firmware 4.0. So once you have that downloaded, you get a little folder over here, which is the X32 firmware 4.2. You have to open this and these two files, they have to be copied to the USB drive. So not the folder, otherwise it won't work. Once you have the firmware downloaded, you're just gonna put it in here. Casper's gonna hold this button, power it on over there, and you can see it's going to start a firmware update. Is it there yet? So the only thing that you do have to keep in mind is that when you update the X32 rack, you also have to update the software X32 edit on your PC and on your iPad, iPhone, whatever. So once you have that, it's going to open. You're going to get this tab. You're going to go right up here to setup. You'll get this little menu and over here in the bottom, you can see which version you've got. That 
took for ages, but we're so happy. So let's plug everything back in. All right, let me just quickly show you what we have here. This is the back panel that I showed you earlier. Right now, this is a USB cable, which is going into here, which here we can connect it to our computer. This one is for the router that we placed up here on a little shelf. And over here, we have the little box that goes to our Wi-Fi extender, which we can route here. From left to right, these red cables here are our outputs. And all these outputs are going to this little 19 inch rack unit here that we soldered last time. These first eight are gonna go through our in-ears and these last eight are the auxiliary outputs which we can use for whatever we like. We use it to send a guide track to our lighting technician. The yellow cables that we uh, label over here are all binded together neatly by our lovely lighting technician and they are going to this little 19 inch rack over here. And these two ports here on the right side are the AES um, A and B ports so that you can connect it to an S16 unit if you would like to. We don't use that because we only use 16 inputs. All right, and here you're looking at our finished back panel. So over here we have input one through 16, which are once again hardwired over here so one of these inputs goes into the x32 and the other one goes out to the desk to the monitor or front of house whatever then these outputs over here are our outputs that go to our in-ears and these six are slightly different than these two because these are Kyle's and he's a special little boy. Then over here are the auxiliary outputs which we use for our lighting technician and to send a backing track to the front of house. And this one's only here to access the router if we ever have to again. And that sums up the way we route our X32. The only thing that we have to talk about is the pricing. Because you might think, well, what about this is on a budget? Well, um, the X32 rack is not an expensive unit compared to its competitors out there. And currently the rack comes in at around 780 euros. We actually got it for 575 brand new two years ago when something was going on at Tolman and all the Behringer prices went down. So we got a little bit lucky with that, but still it's a cheap unit. We paid 85 euros for the rack case that we mounted it in. Brand new, like 300, so that was a pretty good deal. We tried to look out for stuff like this to keep the pricing low. All in all, we spent 455 euros on cables, plugs, and 19 inch rack plates that we used to mount these on. You can get a router for anywhere around 30 to 40 euros. The other thing that was a little bit pricier was the Wi-Fi extender, which cost 80 euros at the time. And three of our band members had to buy the Behringer P1s, which come around 40 euros each. And our drummer actually bought a, a little uh, mixer, uh, which was also right around 40 euros. So all in all, we paid 1405 euros for this entire rack. If you have to buy all these products brand new, then you're gonna end up at 1810 euros. Which sounds like a lot of money, but uh, it's just about the amount of a Kemper unit. And considering that a Kemper makes one guitarist in the band happy, and this unit can make four band members happy, I guess you can do the math. We did save some money on wiring everything ourselves. If that is something you're not comfortable with doing yourself, then you have to take that into account when you make your budget. And just a few quick tips to round this up. Make sure that all your cables are long enough. We use a 20 meter USB cable. We actually use a USB to ethernet plug to amplify the signal. Over the time, it's worth considering to invest in some microphones for your own band. We did that in the past, which now allows us to mic up every rehearsal so that even during rehearsals, we can use this unit and have the same mix every single time. And lastly, when you set up your router, make sure that you give your X32 unit a static IP. This means that whenever you boot the X32, it's going to have a dedicated IP address. 
it's the same again and again. If you don't do this, then it's going to generate an IP address every single time you power it up and you have to connect it to the app every single time again. All in all, it's a great unit. We use it on every rehearsal, every live show. It's a little bit tedious to set it up, but once you do have it set up, then you're going to have the same in-ear mix like pretty much every single time. You just need to adjust it to the room. So I hope you like this video. Please consider subscribing to my channel or following me on my Patreon page.